This is 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, Episode 88, Rescue Your Relationship with Feng Shui. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away and usually in about five minutes. Now, let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hey, how are you? I hope you're doing well and uh, and uh, having a lovely start to your month of June. I know last week's episode, I talked about how to create a peaceful home in turbulent times. And today I want to talk about relationships because when there's difficulties, whether they're uh, on the outside from uh, job stress or lack of a job or financial stress, we can find that our relationships suffer, and in particular, our intimate relationships. So those loving kind of relationships and marriages and partnerships that uh, that really sometimes bear the brunt of everything that's going on outside of us. And, um, you know, a lot of folks, they either find that when times get tough, they hang tougher together. And for some others, they find that the the strain is too much and it can cause them to 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 split up Uh, a couple i knew of their daughter uh, had a brain tumor and the couple worked valiantly uh, to get her to the hospital appointments get her through surgeries and and all the difficulties that you can just imagine that come with that and although they'd been married a long time and had been happy up until that point the stress and the strain of losing a daughter together and everything that that entailed um, created a division in their relationship and they were never able to get back together. So we can have experiences where it is a situation like this one couple with their daughter and, and her illness. It may be right now with the pandemic, the economic outlook, the all the the stress that comes with that, maybe um, a, a job loss, this can take a toll on your relationship. And it's so important that we try to maintain our relationships and to keep an even keel. And even if you're not feeling like you're head over heels in love, uh, just that stability of, of staying together, being together, um, especially through difficult times is, is, is so important. Of course, I'm not advocating that if your relationship is, is in a serious decline or you're really, really unhappy, if you are better off uh, with, you know, moving on or without one another, um, then, then, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't get a divorce by any means. Um, you know, what's right for you, but if you, uh, would like to rescue your relationship or try to, to help kind of bolster it a little bit, then today's episode is for you. And, uh, it is one of the episodes that it's really near and dear to my heart because I'm a big believer in the foundation of family and how important uh, it is for stability in our lives and in our heart and in our minds. So let's let's get into how to uh, rescue a relationship if you're having troubles. And, uh, and, and I also believe that it is also what I'm going to be talking about today, strengthening for your relationship. So you don't have to be on the verge of divorce. It may just be that, you know, you've kind of lost your way together. You've uh, kind of split up in a, in, in a way, you know, it may be emotionally, you're just not as close as you need to be. So this is a nice way to kind of reinvigorate a relationship. And um, so let's get started. Now, of course, when it comes to feng shui, um, this is one of the major questions that I'm often asked about if it's it runs love and money are the two things everyone wants to know about. And, um, and, and 
And in feng shui, the family and is in, in the that stability and the relationship, the partnership um, of two people is really critical and it's a big cornerstone in feng shui. So there's a lot of focus on attracting and maintaining maintaining love in feng shui, but when it comes to relationships, we know the sad truth is that many relationships teeter on a fine line between being together and breaking up. So either the passion is faded, like I mentioned earlier, or what was once your love's most wonderful qualities <laughs> have suddenly changed from being what you love to what annoys you most about him or her. Um, sometimes there's just a quiet death in a relationship, no fireworks, no pleading, just a slow dying of the relationship, like a sun setting. Um, there are a lot of reasons why love can shift gears and kind of go into neutral, neither passionate nor antagonistic, but in general, just a malaise that causes relationships to just die of boredom and inattention. And if this describes your relationship, it's a good time to infuse some new energy to help create a loving, passionate, and caring feeling again. At least some tenderness. Uh, that's, that's what we want to go for, is creating some sort of intimate tenderness. Now, feng shui can be used to attract love, maintain love and passion, and even rescue it from going over the edge. Bear in mind, though, if you do have serious issues like cheating or major philosophical or life moral differences, your relationship may not be able to be rescued, but even so, here are some tips to help you pull your relationship off of that edge or cliff, or maybe even reinvigorate it if it's gone stale. So let's, let's talk about one of the tough subjects right off the bat. And this is when your spouse won't have sex with you. Now this points to a major problem, and it could be just, you know, you've to have the passions faded, the, the, the spark has gone out. But let's talk about, you know, there could be a, a variety of reasons uh, why this happens. But let's talk about what we can do uh, in terms of looking at the feng shui. Because you know what your relationship is like and you can probably point to some reasons. But let's look at let's look at the bedroom. Let's start there. Let's let's say what we can see in our outer world and how it's affecting your relationship inner world. So the bedroom obviously is the first place to start. Now if you've got a broken down better mattress, this could reflect the broken down quality of your love life. So remember to keep up uh, with your mattress. Invest in a good one because it's not just a foundation of your ability to rest, it's also the foundation for your you're married or your partner life as well. So you want to invest in both your rest and your relationship. The mattress is just more than uh, than just a, a, you know a soft cushy spot to, to sleep on. It's also a symbol of your of your of your relationship. Now one of the reasons a lot of people get give for not being interested in sex is they're tired. <laughs> This is true. I, I, I will tell you, I, I, I never feign a headache, but I, I do fall asleep <laughs> um, in my relationship frequently. And so does my husband. You know, we're both, you know, snoring it up uh, in the evening. And it's like, you know, uh, this is just, <laughs> we got to have to stay awake, maybe have a cup of coffee after dinner. <laughs> but a quality mattress could be indirectly a very sexy investment. So make sure that your bedroom also appeals to you. Uh, so find a mattress that is, comfortable for both of you and that works for both of you. Some people may find that you like uh, one of those uh, tempur types, others want a really soft one, and for those who want one, one one's a hard mattress, one wants a soft mattress, you can get those na types that you can you can actually set the dial to whatever si uh, type of mattress firmness you want, so that's great. Now, it's also important that the bedroom decor appeals to both of you. So if your bedroom is a tribute, tribute to your love of English roses, then that's not gonna be a bedroom where relationships are gonna, fe are gonna flourish. Actually, uh, relationships in are, are really, a, it's sort of a, a tender balance of yin and yang. And this is irrespective of male and female relationships. If it's, if, uh, if it's two women or two men or a man and woman, there are some yin. You may have one partner that's more yin and another partner that's more yang. And that's irrespective of gender. But but that's important because these are two, we're talking about two different types of, of energies that we're talking about here. So um, when you have 
uh, let's say floral sheets or floral decor, what that does is it competes with the masculine energy. And you may think that that seems peculiar, but that's one of the reasons why men or those who are more yang uh, energetically it doesn't appeal to them, uh, that florally thing, because on a uh, very um, fundamental level, flowers are the yang expression of a plant. So it is actually a competitor for the yang energy in the relationship. So that's why we don't want to have uh, flowers in, our, in or florals in their bedroom. We also don't want to have uh, any kind of plants, plant images, pictures of flowers, pictures of of, of trees and plants and that kind of stuff. Um, and if they are, it's very simple ones, but we don't want to have a whole big leafy kind of, of bedroom decor. It's the same kind of thing. It's actually not good from, uh, from actually just a straight up feng shui perspective. Plants and plant symbols are, and plant motifs as well as floral motifs are not indicated for good rest in feng shui. The thought is that plants take energy. I know we know in the Western world in science that plants give us uh, oxygen, but and when you're, we're talking about um, uh, people are, are considered more earth and um, plants take from the earth. So that's why having plants in your bedroom is a no-no and having flowers in there is a no-no and and even having plant or floral motifs is a no-no because wood draws from earth and we're earth people. So we always want to make sure that we we don't draw away uh, from our health, from our well-being, and from our relationship by having plant or floral motifs. Okay, so now you got the lowdown (laughs) on florals and, and plant motifs in the bedroom. Uh, so, but so we talked about sort of the the yang side that we don't want to have flowers in there because they compete with that yang energy. And likewise, if um, if a bedroom is too yin, that's too cold or too masculine uh, feeling, that kind of a masculine decor, it might be extra difficult to get that um, that energy that the to get the woman to to kind of heat up or the or the 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 person who has that yin energy in the relationship to get them to to feel feel uh, fired up about romance and passion or feel passion in fact. So this is why uh, we want to have a really nice sort of neutral type of hotel or boutique hotel type of decor in the bedroom. So it's neither masculine nor feminine. It's this really kind of uh, gender neutral uh, type of environment that is um, that appeals to both. And I think you can find uh, you can find decor styles very easily. Just go check into a couple of really great hotels. Think of this as some homework to do. I think that would be a lot of fun. Check into some really upscale or uh, beautiful uh, boutique type hotels and look at them in terms of design and think about how you would like your bedroom to look when you're in those hotels together. It might make some fun homework, don't you think? I think so. Now let's talk about wandering in relationships um, and infidelity. Now, if it's somebody just giving a, if your partner's giving a casual glance, that's one thing. Um, If it's cheating, that's another. So what we want to do is help ground that relationship and, uh, and help keep keep both parties happy and at home now one of the classic ways to to combat uh, a partner wandering away is to tie a um, a geode with a red ribbon and put it under the foot of the bed usually under the woman's side but my feeling is I like the idea of grounding both partners to each other and for that reason I think it's a nice idea to have a geode that is uh, wrapped with a red ribbon and tied and put under the foot of each partner. We're under the foot of the bed where each partner sleeps. That way it keeps you both grounded to your relationship and I think it's a nice activator uh, for for love. It's an activator for wealth that you're going to be sleeping on top of. So I think it's a really nice way to activate your relationship and also activate you for wealth in, the, in, in as well, which 
which we all know a lot of folks have um, arguments and discretion uh, or uh, discussions and disagreements around money. So this is a, it's a nice boost for both of those aspects. Now let's talk about prior relationships. You know, when we talk about prior relationships, if you're coming in from, let's say, a, uh, this is a second marriage or a, a third marriage or whatever, or another new relationship, and you're coming from a previous relationship, then the bed, the sheets, the mattress, if they're coming from that previous relationship, then it's bringing that energy in with it. And for that reason, it's you hate to throw away all the furniture, but if you... <laughs> after after a, a relationship has has gone by the wayside and and I don't think that there's a need to do that necessarily but when it comes to this symbol of your relationship which is the bed you really do want to replace that. It's important that you have, just like you get a new wedding ring uh, when you remarry or or other symbol of partnering, you want that that bed is also a symbol of a partnership. You wouldn't reuse the same wedding ring from a previous relationship, so don't use the same bed. <laughs> it just kind of makes some sense, doesn't it? That you just get new uh, bedding and sheets and a bed and mattress and so on, so you don't have that old relationship. Uh, uh, energy that that didn't work out you don't want to bring that into the new relationship so very important that you go furniture shopping and go bedroom shopping together and hey that's always uh, something that gets a lot of folks into the mood of, of being in bed together and <laughs> when they're shopping for a bed together so uh, this is makes a nice uh, fun trip for the for a couple let's talk about doubling up there is a uh, an idea, a symbol in, in feng shui called the double happiness symbol. And it represents two people together and it's their mirror images of each other. And, and this double happiness symbol is seen all throughout Asia and it represents conjugal bliss and marital happiness. But you don't have to paste these Chinese words around the house to boost your relationship. Uh, all you have to do is take a cue from that symbol, which is, like I said, is a is two, it's two symbols that are exactly like put together and look for pairs in your house uh, for ex example a really important one is your nightstands now I know a lot of interior designers don't like that matchy matchy sort of thing but here's what I can tell you we like symmetry into our eyes you know we're all a set of, of pairs right each human is a set of pairs two arms two legs two eyes two ears and so on and when we look at a bedroom that has a uh, two nightstands that are matching, two lamps on the nightstands that are matching, it feels symmetrical, it feels harmonious, and it feels balanced. And for that reason, I really feel like if you're in a, uh, a guest bedroom, go to your heart's content, put mismatching nightstands, do whatever you want. But in your bedroom, especially if it's in a relationship, I think it's really important that you have matching ones so that you it, it what it does is it symbolizes pairing. And that's what we want to do is make sure that we have pairing in our in our bedrooms to to represent our pairing as a couple. So double up on things. You can also look around your house, your your uh, living room, anywhere in the house, and look for pairs of of items, decorative objects. Like you can put uh, a pair of vases in the southwest corner. You can put um, two bird figurines somewhere, uh, or even two items um, like uh, two pictures. We just want to have, and what's important is we just want to have the the image of two reinforced because when we have that singular image uh, that's when uh, if we see too much singular images then it creates um, that sort of um, sort of solitariness and we don't want that if we want to help rescue our relationship or reinvigorate our relationship. I want to share a story with you about a feng shui consultant I trained and she was also in my coaching group and 
one of the things that she had talked about was her unhappy marriage. And one of the things that brought her to feng shui was that she was unhappy in her relationship and she wanted to create a better marriage. And one of the things that this symbol of double happiness kind of just, you know, hit her between the eyes with the duh kind of feeling was she looked around her house and she said she noticed that a lot of her artwork was of a single woman or a single woman standing on a beach, uh, solitarily looking out to the ocean. And what she saw was basically a sad, lonely, single woman. And it struck her that she she wanted to have a happy pairing with her husband, that she needed to see happy pairing in in her home. And so she took down all the pictures of the single woman in her house that looked lonely and sad and solitary. And she said it made a huge and dramatic change in her relationship. So look around your house. Artwork and images really do matter, especially like things like sad images. Um, We don't want to have anything that looks sort of sad or depressive. Uh, Definitely want to change that uh, view so that it's, it's, it's happy, it's lighter, and that you see pairs uh, of objects, pairs of images. So, so important. All right, well, let's talk about the view from your bed. Now, one of the things we don't talk about a lot is what do you see when you're in bed? Are you in bed and you can see the bathroom? You can see straight into the toilet, the sink, the shower. Maybe you see stair uh, your stairwell. Uh, if you can see anything like that, that's a not considered to be a positive view. In fact, what it is, is it's a draining view. So we want to make sure that uh, whatever it is, even if it's just a pile of clothes. Pick up that pile of clothes. But the worst part is if you're seeing into a bathroom. We really, it's so important that you block that view because it drains energy away from each of you and from your relationship. If you can reposition the bed, maybe um, try to hang a curtain, do something that blocks that view. And if you do, you might notice that your relationship picks up. You may notice that you rest better. Let me tell you, two tired people do not a relationship make, or they certainly don't, (laughs) do not a romantic relationship make. We really need to be well rested. So let's talk about another thing that is uh, stimulating in the bedroom, and that is those big old mirrors uh, that are over a dresser or a nightstand. So important that you take away any mirrors, especially those that reflect the bed, because these can lead to infidelity because it doubles the number of people in your bedroom and we always want to keep that number two what two right so if you have one of those dressers that has a a a mirror attached the triple dresser that has the mirror attached you know those come off (laughs) you just turn it around in at the back and you usually can just unscrew it right then and there put it in a hallway donate it do something with it but hang a pretty picture over your dresser it's more elegant in my opinion and if you need to look at yourself in the mirror uh, hang one on the back of your closet door or find some other spot in the closet or your bathroom to put one so that you can uh, take a look at yourself but really it's so important that we take that mirror off or out of our bedroom so that we don't have any extra stimulation uh, that will keep us from resting or that that doubles the number of people that that actually brings outside influences into your relationship so we don't want to do that So let's talk also about the view of you too. Now, when's the last time that you had a picture taken together when you were happy? You know, a lot of folks have their old pictures of of, uh, when they first got married or when they first got together, and then they don't take any pictures afterwards. So important that you have current, uh, like a current picture that you you can view that where you see yourselves in the picture photographed now and happy. Uh, find, get a picture taken. Heck, snap one yourself with your with your smartphone. They do so many beautiful things these days. Uh, it's amazing how, how great the technology is in just a simple phone <laughs> these days. Well, of course, they're not simple phones, but 
you know, get a picture, have a friend take a picture of you, do anything, just get a picture taken. You know, if you go on vacation somewhere, I know nobody's really vacationing right now with coronavirus, but if, but if you, if you end up going on a vacation somewhere, you know, I'm one of those that whenever the, the photographers come around, like if you're at a resort or something, I, I, I take advantage. I'm like, yep, give me a picture. And I take a picture every time. And I look back on the pictures at, oh, I think we had a, we went on one cruise in our 30 years of marriage, one cruise. And, and by the way, uh, this month, uh, Tim and I are celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary, but we've, I've always said, yes, take my picture. You know, yes, we want to have a picture of the two of us together from, from, uh, our trip to Las Vegas or, or Hawaii or wherever it was that we are, uh, we were in. So, you know, I can frame it when we get home. I have one of my favorite, uh, photographs is Tim and me at the top of, uh, the Eiffel Tower restaurant in, in Las Vegas. We did, we couldn't go to Paris that year, but we went to the closest thing. We went to the Paris <laughs> casino. But if you've ever been in the Eiffel Tower restaurant up there, it's very romantic. And we had a table overviewing the fountains at the Bellagio and it was, you know, it's all red and brass and, uh, we had a lovely evening. It was absolutely beautiful. And I have that picture framed and on our, uh, a, a big, uh, family, um, credenza, buffet credenza in the, in the living room. And it, and it makes me happy whenever I see it. So, you know, get a picture of the two of you as you are now. Lastly, let's talk about, uh, supporting your relationship. Uh, you really, the bedroom is the thing that makes and breaks a relationship, uh, or it just can, it influences it. It can, you know, make it, um, more difficult. Uh, it can make it more stressful when, uh, you've got, you know, too much floral, uh, decor, or if you have no headboard or the mattress is broken down, you know, there's a lot of things that can be working against us in our bedroom and in our, against our relationship in particular. But one of the things I see on, uh, in, in, decorating uh, and working in feng shui are so many people don't have headboards on their beds. And if you have a relationship that doesn't have a headboard, then you have a, a relationship that might be struggling. And this is really important. Yet you have the kind of support that will help support your relationship. So the headboard is, if you think of it, it's like the back of a chair. Yeah, you can sit on a stool for a while, but it's really tiring on your back because there's no support. That's why chairs are more comfortable when they have a full back behind them. And the same is true with a headboard. If it's uncomfortable and it doesn't allow you to sit up and talk together, uh, or worse, there isn't one at all, that relationship is is going to quietly and slowly just you know fade off into the sunset or the passion will die or you feel disconnected and we don't want that so get a good solid headboard uh, for your bed and I think it'll do a lot toward boosting your relationship and making you feel better you won't understand you'll go gosh I just feel so much better now that we have this headboard and you're just going to feel so much more rested and that's going to make you have a much better feeling when you're going to bed and especially in your shared bedroom together all right well this has brought me to the end of this episode and I want to give you always those three tips tip number one look for a solitary or sad images in your house we don't want to have any kind of solitary or sad images in the house, uh, especially those solitary ones, because they can be, have a depressive quality and that can harm your relationship. Number two, picture yourselves happy. Get a current picture of yourself doing something fun, going somewhere, being somewhere. Maybe when you're going and uh, um, you're trying out the different hotels just to see what kind of decorating they have and that you can incorporate in your own home. Maybe that's where you go get uh, a photograph of the two of you. Why not, right? Uh, no, tip number three, reinvigorate your relationship by reinvigorating your bedroom. So that means getting rid of any old linens or mattress or furniture in the bedroom that comes from a previous relationship or that's broken down or if you don't have a headboard get a headboard invest in your relationship by investing in the decor and the care and the enjoyment in your bedroom and that will help stimulate the care and enjoyment that you get in your relationship hope you enjoyed today's episode of five minute feng shui it's a subject near and dear to my heart and i hope uh, if your relationship is struggling that some of these tips might help you out be sure to 
drop me a note and let me know if you enjoyed this, today's podcast. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, if you enjoyed this, please leave an, uh, a review on iTunes. I'd love to hear from you. And snap a picture of it. Send me a, 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 a snap of your, of your iTunes review, and I'll be sure to send you a free gift. Thanks a lot. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you again next week. Thanks for listening to 5-Minute Feng Shui today. The Year of the Rat is coming and I want to share with you where you can find money, love, and opportunity in 2020. And it's all in my annual Feng Shui Forecast the Success Pack. You get a full year of in-depth Feng Shui details about how to use the energy of the year for success and prosperity. That's because every year we're showered with a Roman candle of opportunities for money, abundance, love, and opportunity. You just have to know where they are. And my Year of the Rat Feng Shui Success Pack includes all the details for every house and every zodiac sign. You also get this year's lucky clothing, handbag, and wallet colors. So be sure to go to redlotusletter.com forward slash rat for all the details on the year of the rat and how to make this year the year of your dreams.